This is a video lecture series from Men's School Science where this video you'll be able to play but at any point you'll be able to pause, fast forward, or rewind within the video. And this lesson is going to concentrate on refraction and lenses and it's going to still be in the realm of light. So once again light is going to be energy. And that energy is going to be traveling uh, in these packets of energy called photons but it travels in the form of a wave. Now, this light can actually travel through uh, certain types of materials. Uh, some materials will let all the light pass through, while some others might actually have that light bend, uh, or have that light actually begin to slow down a bit um, as it tries to travel through that material. So this is going to examine what happens to that light when it travels through that material, and what are going to be the effects of that light as it travels through. So, uh, lenses are going to be found in many places uh, within the environment and the world around us. Uh, some of those places you'll find those in magnifying glasses, where the light will be able to travel through that magnifying glass, but we'll see that something will actually occur to that light uh, if you ever try to uh, light ants on fire outside with the use of the sun. Or uh, you might actually be wearing glasses, and those glasses actually have lenses on them made of glass. Uh, or you might wear contact lenses and be, those will be lenses made of plastic. Also within your eyes you actually have lenses. <clears throat> and some other places you might actually find lenses might be on like telescopes or even on microscopes uh, or cameras that you might actually use are all going to contain lenses uh, which are going to be some sort of transparent material which actually lets light come through. But now what happens to uh, that light though as it actually travels through that matter is that matter can actually slow down uh, these light waves. Because light actually are made of these little packets of energy, those packets will actually begin to slow down as it travels through that material. But when it actually gets past that material, it will continue to travel uh, fast just like it did when it first entered into that material. So the greater the density of the matter, the slower the wave will actually travel. So if there are going to be uh, more particles um, within that matter, it's going to take uh, a longer time for those packets or those particles of, of light to be able to move through that matter. Now the speed of light is around 300 million uh, meters per second or um, somewhere around 182,000 uh, miles uh, per second uh, which is actually fast and I believe it's the fastest thing that we uh, can have traveling. Now the larger the change in speed the more the wave will refract. So once again refraction is going to be the bending of light as it goes from one medium or one material to another. So light can actually travel very quickly through air but once it tries to travel through glass um, that wave will actually start to bend because it actually travels uh, a bit slower through that material. Or if you have something that's even denser like uh, a diamond, now that light will actually travel even slower through that diamond and will actually bend more as it travels through. So now this light as it actually bends, so if this light actually travels through something like a glass prism and I have a different material here, so if it travels through the air and it travels now through glass, that light is going to begin to slow down. And when it does, that light is going to bend or it's going to refract. Now here, red light is going to actually refract the least within my glass uh, prism. Uh, and it's going to bend the least here. So I have red. But then orange will actually bend more. Yellow then will bend more than um, gr uh, green. Then uh, blue, then indigo, then violet uh, will bend the most. Uh, that will allow us to actually separate out the different colors of light uh, that are actually going to be within my white light. So once again, white light is a combination of all the colors of light combined together uh, will give us actually white light. So when we have white light that actually comes out from the sun, that white light, after it rains, <clears throat> that light from the sun might actually come and interact with the droplets of the water that might be within the air. So when that does, that water in the air is going to refract that light and it's actually going to bend it. So when that light then bends, 
Okay, red is going to bend uh, the least, then yellow, then uh, then orange, then yellow, then green, blue, and then violet, which all separates out, which allows us to see a rainbow. And you might actually see a rainbow in the sky, and that's all that's going to be is light that comes out from the sun that starts to bend uh, because it travels through a different material, and this material will be water after it rains. So lenses are going to be a transparent object uh, with a curved surface that bends light. So lenses are this transparent object. It could be glass. Um, they could be crystals. Uh, they could be anything that's clear uh, with a curved surface that can actually bend light. Now convex lenses are going to be thicker in the center uh, than at the ends. So a convex lens is going to be thicker in that center area and thinner uh, at the ends and curved outward. While a concave lens is going to be thicker at the ends than at the center and it's going to have be thinner in the center, thicker at the ends, it's going to be curved inward and it's going to be curved like a cave, caved in. So concave lenses are caved in. Now a convex lens is going to be curved outward uh, and you'll see those in many like magnifying glasses or maybe even in a, uh, a microscope uh, and even in some telescopes or the large um, refracting telescopes you'll actually see uh, a convex lens. So the convex lens like in a uh, magnifying glass is actually going to have the image appear larger when it's close by or close to it. So if you have a magnifying glass and it's close to the image, it'll actually make the image appear larger and upright. While in a concave lens, a concave lens is going to be caved in and that's going to allow an image to actually appear smaller and upright. So what happens with the light in a convex lens is that light rays will actually come and these rays will start to bend as it actually goes through the material. And the amount that it bends uh, will be shown here. Now this light in a convex lens is going to come together at something called the focal point. So the light here is going to come together at this point which is called the focal point. And in something like this where that light actually comes in straight, it's going to, uh, that focal point is going to be on the optical axis. Which is this middle line or the center line uh, within the lens. Or it's an imaginary line within uh, the center of the lens. Um, and here is going to be the focal point. Now if we are within the focal point here, the object will appear larger and will appear upright. But if we are beyond the focal point here, the object will actually appear upside down with a convex lens. And if we are beyond that focal point, or beyond this focal length, from the lens to that focal point, and we are beyond that. So here is a concave lens, and in the concave lens, when that light actually comes, that light is actually going to disperse, or it's going to separate out. Now when that light actually disperses, that's what's going to make the object appear smaller. <clears throat> now concave and convex lenses act oppositely from their mirror counterparts. Now once again, if you have a concave mirror, a concave mirror is going to create a focal point. Uh, while a convex mirror is going to disperse the light and make that light diverge. While concave lenses will actually disperse the light and convex lenses will make the light actually come to a focal point. So convex lenses creates a focal point and concave lenses diverges light waves and make those light waves separate and go farther apart from each other. So here is going to be an example of what happens um, um, with everybody with light because your eyes actually contains a lens. So what happens with the light is that light will actually come through uh, this clear part here at the front of the eye which is called the cornea. Now the cornea here will allow that light to actually come through and that light will have to come through an opening over here in the eye called the pupil. Now here is the colored part of your eyes which is called the iris and that iris is going to be closed over here allowing only some of that light to actually come through. And when that light comes through you'll have a lens on the inside of the eye. <clears throat> 
Now that lens is going to have that light come together at a focal point at the back of the eye and this is what actually allows you to see. Now here in the back is going to be the retina and then the retina is going to send an image to the optical nerve to tell your brain what it is that you're actually seeing. So this over here is the lens and that shape of the lens is going to allow the uh, focal point to come to the back of the eye. Now if you require glasses that's because the shape of the lens uh, makes it so that the focal point is not on the retina but it's going to be uh, out of place which makes your image uh, not focused. Now, so other places where we'd actually have lenses might be in like projectors. So a long time ago, <clears throat> we used to have uh, slides uh, that would actually go into a projector. Now, those slides would actually have to go into the projector upside down because this would then be beyond the focal point. So when it does and it goes past this focal point here, uh, the, the object will actually appear upright onto a screen. So when you have like a movie projector, the images inside are going to be upside down. Because when they go through that focal point, it's going to bring that image right side up again. Uh, and this can be demonstrated if you've ever tried to make a pinhole camera or a, a box or cam a light box with a pinhole. You can take like a regular shoe box and create a little hole inside. We can put like a light inside that could be like a flashlight. And we need to put some sort of object inside uh, that will create a shadow. And then when you take this box and you take this pinhole, the light is actually going to come out through the pinhole. And then there's going to be a, a focal point uh, that is going to be pass, passing uh, that inside here. So when that light actually comes out, that image might actually appear upside down, a shadow. Uh, you could also do this with uh, things that are transparent or clear, uh, maybe like a clear ruler with the numbers on there. We can try putting that inside and see if those will actually appear upside down or right side up. So to review, some of the things that we've learned from this lesson are going to be about refraction and lenses. Uh, we've learned about convex lenses, concave lenses. Uh, we've learned about focal point and also as well about what occurs within uh, the eyes.